Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever it is that you come to worship with us at St. John on the Desert, welcome. I'm Pastor Leslie Abrams. And I'm still Marcia Soriano. <laughs> Couple of announcements before we begin worship. Next Sunday is Easter, and we are reopening on Easter. <laughs> and the people all say, Good, there you go. Uh, we will continue to record our worship service so that those of you from away can access our services on YouTube. Also, this Thursday, we'll have a special Communion Maundy Thursday worship service. And I'll be sending out the link to both Palm Sunday and Maundy Thursday to you in time. The story of Palm Sunday tells how the people removed their cloaks and spread them out in front of Jesus as he entered Jerusalem. The cloak we wear every day to face the world is both the persona we wish to present and our defense against the elements. As we come to worship, may we be willing to lay down our defenses and disguises at the feet of the one who sees us as we really are. And then, set free for worship, may we offer our praises with open hearts and lives. Let us prepare to worship God. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Palm Sunday and Maundy Thursday, they represent the end of our Lenten journey. And yet we continue to confess before God where we have failed. Please join me in prayer. Precious God, we confess that we're not so different from those who welcomed Christ into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday and yet later shouted, crucify him or remain silent in the face of injustice. I fear we've betrayed you too, Lord Jesus, by our sins both secret and known. Yet you died for people like us, and you rose on the third day that we might be redeemed. For the sake of Jesus Christ, do not hold our sins against us. Jesus, our King of glory, we've not been outspoken for you. We've not called for your death, but neither have we shouted of your greatness nor expressed delight in the salvation you've won for us. Help us to see your glory. Draw us closer to you that we may become more faithful and more joyful servants of the King. Take this moment and lift what burdens your heart to God. Amen. Change my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. You are the potter, I am the clay. Change my heart, O oh God, 
make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. In Christ, God hears, God answers, and God sets us free. In Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Charlie Little, who's going to sing The Holy City. Last night I lay asleep. There came a dream so fair. I stood in old Jerusalem beside the temple there. I heard the children singing, and ever as they sang, methought the voice of angels from heaven answering. Methought the
to Luke, the writer of today's gospel, this is not Palm Sunday. It's Coat Sunday. In Luke's telling, there are no palm branches, no hosannas, no children, just Jesus on a donkey. And as he passes the crowds on his way into Jerusalem, they lay their cloaks and coats before him, creating a path worthy of the one who rode upon it. It's the ancient world's version of a red carpet. Here is what God is telling us today from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verses 29 through 39. When he had come near Bethphage, Bethpage and Bethany at the place called Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples saying, go into the village ahead of you and as you enter it, you will find there tied a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you untying it, just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? And they said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus upon it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heavy, heaven and glory in the highest heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus has turned towards Jerusalem and his destiny on the cross. The week to come will be full of intrigue and drama. Jesus will drive out the souvenir vendors who've parked themselves in the temple entryway. The Pharisees, unhappy with his answers to their questions, will begin their sinister plot to have him executed. He'll warn the crowds surrounding him that the temple will be destroyed and that they will face persecution for following him. In Luke's gospel, Jesus' final week is a dark and ominous one indeed. Yet it begins with people literally taking the clothes off their back to honor him. During this season of Lent, I've been speaking about how the ordinary objects in our lives can help us reflect on our relationship with God and Christ. The dust reminds us of our mortality. The shoes prompt us to recall John the Baptizer and his humility. The two measly coins teach us how valuable we are in God's eyes. And the breadcrumbs inspire us to see everyone as a neighbor in need. 
Today, it's the clothes off our back and the generous praise we're willing to offer to God. The Jews in Jerusalem lived under Roman oppression and the strict laws of the Pharisees. The taxes they paid to Rome were large and the returns ridiculously small. There were over 600 religious laws to which they must adhere. And God protect you if you made a mistake by wearing two different fabrics at once or cutting your beard too short. They lived in abject poverty and hunger because so much of their agricultural output was handed over to the Roman magistrate. They were miserable. So they take the clothes off their backs to pay tribute to the man who they believe will rescue him, them, a man about whom they've only really heard rumors. When it becomes clear during the week ahead that Jesus is not there to save them from their double dose of institutional oppression, they'll turn on him. In one week's time, their shouts of praise will turn to shouts to crucify. They will choose a robber to save, not the one who came to save. And the anger and the pain will return to harden their hearts. As Jesus rode into Jerusalem, he knew what was going to happen. He knew he would be arrested beaten, humiliated, and murdered. Did he also know the crowds would turn against him? Did he know the red carpet would turn to the green mile? Did he know just how fickle his followers would be? Yes, of course he knew. And yet he entered Jerusalem anyway. One of the things I admire about our brothers and sisters in many non-denominational churches is the intensity with which they worship. With hands raised and voices strong, they sing their praise to Christ vigorously and passionately. They come from all walks of life, gathering every Sunday, often for hours, to praise the one who came to save. Their music may be loud, and their theology too fundamental for my taste, but they sure do know how to show Jesus they love him. We, Presbyterians, on the other hand, are the frozen chosen. Reserved and scholarly, we are downright chintzy about glorifying God. Yet, in our own way, we also take the clothes off our back to honor the Christ. We may not sing with gusto, but we serve with enthusiasm. We may not raise our hands in prayer, but we raise our hands to volunteer. We may not boast a rock band, but we can boast a rock-solid understanding of how our love for Jesus translates into action. But would we take the clothes off our back to glorify Jesus? To show Jesus just how much he matters in our lives? There's a story about a woman with a large family who loved her deeply. Each birthday and Christmas, they lavished her with gifts. She'd take the aprons and handkerchiefs, the brooches and hand-knit sweaters, and wrap them carefully and put them away, everything carefully preserved for a special occasion. And then, suddenly, she died. Never having worn the special occasion items because the special occasion never materialized. She was never really able to enjoy the gifts and never giving those who gave them the pleasure of seeing her wear them. But in the weeks before her death, she had sh started sharing her feelings more openly. 
She'd always been a somewhat reserved person, holding tight to her feelings and handing out affirmations and expressions of affection sparingly. Something in her moved her to tell those closest to her that she loved them, and ultimately, it meant the world to those who, left, who were left behind. We have received so many gifts from God and Christ, gifts we often downplay or hide away. Perhaps the end of Lent and the beginning of Easter is the special occasion we've been waiting for. This is Coat Sunday, and it's no time to hold back. Shout with abandon, praise Jesus with song and prayer, throw your coat into the mix, spread it on the road and let it get dirty. Don't suppress your urge to be generous with your affection, your resources, your love. The ones you love, including Jesus, will not walk the earth forever. So now is the time. Please join me in prayer. Lord Jesus, today of all days, we shout with joy that you came into the world and came into our lives. Your compassion for us and for all of creation stuns us. What can we give to show our gratitude, our desire to follow you, our love? You don't ask for sacrifice, but you do ask for a contrite heart and unrestrained worship. In thanksgiving and praise, we spread our coats on the road before you, a symbol of our willingness to hold nothing back from you who gave everything for us. Amen. Marcia and I are going to sing, even though it's not in Luke's gospel, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. Mr. Dean. Hi, Pastor Leslie. How are you? I'm fine. Listen, I have some questions. Okay. It's about uh, Palm Sunday. Okay. That's today. Well, actually. And, and did you know that Easter is coming up? Yes, I and was. did you know that it's <clears throat> spring? Yes, I did so know it's spring. So why are all the coats here? Ah, because in the Gospel of Luke, Luke doesn't talk about spring or warm weather. 
He says that all the people laid their cloaks in the path before Jesus as he entered Jerusalem on a donkey. On a donkey? Yes. So all of those coats probably had donkey trots on them. Yes, and I'm sure that's not the only thing they had on them. I'm sure there was dust. <laughs> we come to a time of prayer. And today I ask that we pray for the citizens of Atlanta and Boulder who have now experienced two mass killings in the course of one short week. We also want to pray for the many people in Myanmar who are trying to rebel against an unlawful coup and who are being killed for their efforts to raise their voices in democratic unity. Finally, I ask that we continue to pray for John Deering in his cancer journey. Please join me in prayer. Precious God, precious God, our world is indeed broken. And we have the tools and the resources and the gifts to do so much about it. Help us, Lord. Help us to inspire others to take action that will protect our children in the grocery stores, in their schools, that will protect teenagers in movie theaters, and will protect all of us, as we go about our daily lives. We ask that you be with the people of Myanmar, struggling to hang on to a democracy and paying the price for it. Be with our friend, our brother in faith, John Deering, on his cancer journey. As always, Lord, we ask that you be with those we hold in our hearts whose names we did not say out loud. Be with those who point the way, the teachers working under difficult circumstances, the preachers working under challenging circumstances. Be with those who stand tall, who t protect us, who vaccinate us, who keep us from harm, be with the last, the lost, the least, and those left out, those stuck in the rat race, those who are on the margins. And finally, with great humility, Lord, we ask that you bless each and every one of us as we together say the prayer your son taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Folks, I know we're Presbyterians. I know we're not apt to raise our hands in praise and glory of God. And I know you are very serving God in all the ways that we know how. But this is Palm Sunday. This is a reminder that crowds circled around him just to get a glimpse. I invite you to sing your praises to God in Christ loud and recklessly with abandon. Because the grace that has been given to you, the forgiveness that has been bestowed on you, has also been given with abandon. Be at peace until we meet again. Amen. <laughs>